Forge is a much better version of the automatic 1111 Stable Diffusion Web UI, and not just because Forge is easier to say. With its great optimizations, Forge is ideal for testing those chunky SDXL models which might not have worked well for you before. One such model is the newly released Proteus version 0.3, which I'll be looking at today. Also, while I went over masked IP adapter and photo maker in my previous video, Forge does have a number of other built-in features like dynamic thresholding, free U, the new high-res fix, and more, which I'll be taking a look at today as well. Why would you consider Proteus? Well, basically it does realism, surrealism, and anime pretty well. Also, GPL3 license, I do like those. In their words, Proteus version 0.3 has been advanced with an additional 200,000 anime-related images, further refined by a selection of 15,000 aesthetically pleasing images, enhancing its lighting effects significantly. This upgrade preserves its understanding of prompts and maintains its photorealistic and stylistic capabilities without suffering from catastrophic forgetting. I think that's something I suffer from quite a lot, so it's good to see the model doesn't. To give a bit of background into Proteus, it was born out of Open Dali version 1.1 and was fine-tuned using around 220,000 GPTV captioned copyright-free stock images, along with using DPO and numerous LoRa's. As they say, consequently, Proteus exhibits marked improvements in portraying intricate facial characteristics and lifelike skin textures, all while sustaining commendable proficiency across various aesthetic domains, notably surrealism, anime, and cartoon-style visualizations. If you've watched anything on my channel before, you know I love to test these claims, so I figured why not put the model through its paces versus a bunch of others. As I'm using Forge, I'll also play with some of those built-in features like the Turbo Samplers, Dynamic Thresholding, Free U, and more if you're interested in those. First up, some XY grids, as model swapping now works properly. You can make these yourself via the XY script at the bottom. If you're just experiencing the power of SDXL thanks to Forge, this is a great way to compare loads of things at once, such as models or samplers. The models I'm testing are named at the top, and I've picked out some of the most popular to compare against. You can also see the prompts over on the left. I'm not using any special features here other than the DPM++ 2M STE Turbo Sampler, simply because it's new and shiny, just a standard 20 steps guidance 8, 1024 by 1024. The first test is just to see how well these models generate text. It's always going to be pretty bad, making it quite a fun test. Interestingly, Proteus does pretty well along with realistic stock photo. Just a little zoom there so you can see them a bit better. The second test is for a basic anime style and all of them do pretty well, with Animagine creating something quite different from all the others. Test number three goes from an oil painting style portrait, and once again, I really like the Proteus and stock photo outputs, but overall, they're all quite good. The anime-focused Animagic will have some issues with anything that isn't anime, of course, so don't worry about that. In test four, I'm using both a slightly complex prompt to test for color bleeding, also while seeing if the model can handle photorealism. Proteus once again does look pretty decent and has a good amount of detail. Test 5 is something I think not many models handle well, and that's the watercolour style. You may think differently, but for me, it's Wyvern Mix for the style, followed by Stock Photo for Adherence and Style. Proteus is pretty good, though the portal is more behind the kitten than on the floor. The final test row is for the pixel art style, most of which are pretty good, apart from Chromax and Animagine. So, giving a very subjective quality and prompt adherence result for test set 1, I'd say Proteus does indeed pass all of those tests, though so do Wyvern Mix and Realistic Stock Photo. For Proteus, they say, please also consider using these keywords to improve your prompts. So, let's include some of those and see what happens in test set 2. 
The first test this time is for realism. I wanted something which looks like a photo, but obviously doesn't exist in reality. Plus, I've used some of those suggested words for Proteus. Does it make any difference? Well, let's take a look and see. A quick zoom in there, and again, it's tough, but honestly, I do quite like the shades in Proteus along with those eyes. Uh, slightly freaky hand, but still one of my favorite. We can scroll along. Have a look at the other bits of realism in there. That one's slightly blown out. So yeah, I think Proteus has done really well there. Test number two is a funny one as you could read it either way around. Is the artist a rodent or not? Well, most of the models seem to say no. This should ideally be an anime style and a number of the models have failed there. High contrast has triggered black and white mode in a couple of them too, which isn't an issue but is interesting to see. Honestly, once again, Proteus has done the best there for me, but just for the way the images look, Anime Mix and Chromax also are pretty good. To mix things up a bit, the next two are different subjects, car and mansion. The car should be a 3D render and the Gothic mansion should be realistic. Personally, I think all of the mansions fail and the Hello World car is the best, but make your own mind up. Proteus claims to be good at lifelike skin textures, so test number five is for exactly that. We'll have a little zoom in there. How well did it do? That's the Proteus one. Is it a surreal and lifelike skin texture? Well, once again, you can make your own mind up, but I think it did pretty well. The final test in the second test set then is for anime again, but this time with text as well as a complex prompt. As expected, not a single model actually does what I asked for. We can zoom in, have a look at some of those t-shirts. It's not, it's not quite right, is it? But never mind, text isn't the best in stable diffusion anyway. How would you subjectively rate those models for quality and prompt adherence now? Well, still a pretty tough call for me, but Proteus does indeed seem to hold up against the best of them. For test set three, let's use some of those built-in features of Forge. Okay, so for giggles, let's crank that guidance scale up to 21 and the number of steps up to 42. Why is that guidance scale so high? Well, that's thanks to the dynamic thresholding, also known as guidance scale fix. By enabling this, you can crank the guidance scale up to much higher values, which will help with prompt adherence and also help to get a better color range. I like to use mimic scale one, cosine down, scaling start point set to zero, variability measure set to STD or misses, and phi interpolation at 0.7. FreeU is a method that substantially improves diffusion model sample quality at zero cost. No training, no additional parameters introduced, and no increase in memory or sampling time. I mostly start with the parameters from the GitHub repo, but it's a good idea to do your own testing too. So there it is, B1.3, B2 1.4, S1 0.9, and S2 0.2, which is exactly what I've got set in the free U section there. Will those couple of things make a massive difference? Well, test set three should help you decide. As a super quick overview here, then many of the results do seem better now. Thanks to Free You, we can see the aliens now have the correct number of fingers for a human, as do some of these artists. The higher guidance scale means the cars now pretty much all have reflections, though the Gothic mansions still do look more like paintings than photos. The faces have some changes too, with the surrealism still struggling to poke through in many of them. And finally, the rodents are just a little bit more cool looking. Okay, so we've seen what dynamic thresholding and free you can do. Let's take a quick look at one more of those built-in features which you may not be familiar with, and that's the high-res fix integrated. Yes, you've now got two high-res fix options. You'll probably be familiar with the first one. Basically, up here, you've got high-res fix. You can enable that, and it's expanded there. And what that does is creates one image and then upscales it. To keep the upscaled image closer to the original, I do like to change the default from 0.7 down to 0.5. So let's have a 
quick look at what the normal high res fix does to start with. There he is, I've got my rodent. If I open him up in a new tab, I can see that's 2048 by 2048 and quite a decent output. Now that one took 40.9 seconds. And the main thing with a new high res fix is that it can be faster, though your image will be quite different. Okay, so let's have a look at the new one. So rather than the standard high res fix you might be familiar with, let's turn that off, take that down. Instead, because we're not doing the upscaling, we're going to put the width and the height all the way up to the final resolution we want there. And in the high res fix integrated, I'm going to enable that. Now, most of those you can just keep the same, but I do like to play with the downscale and upscale methods. So I'm going to change both of those to by Slurpic and run that one through. As you can probably see, that one was considerably quicker rather than 40.9 seconds. That one's down at 25.6 seconds. Same resolution, it's still 2048 by 2048, but you might have noticed our sign has now gone a little bit wonky. And that's where another of the integrated features comes in really handy. And that's the one just below here, self attention guidance integrated. This one's a lot easier. You basically just tick the enabled box, much like with free you enabling this should give you improved images, though in this case, your performance will be impacted. Let's regenerate that and see how the image changes. There it is. So we've gone from 25 seconds all the way back up to 35 seconds, but uh, we'll open them up in a new tab again. But as you can see there, now the sign is much better. So it does improve the image quality a little bit, but is a lot slower. So what I'd maybe do with these is enable it later on in your workflow after you've got an image that you'd like to improve. Your choice, of course, but I'm sure you can see from the results why I quite like this one. Hopefully that's demystified some of those newly integrated features in Forge you might not have played with, and perhaps why Proteus is worth a download for you as well. Do let me know down in the comments right after you've pressed the like button. You could also watch this next Nerdy Rodent video.